Hey everyone. A crazy story has been in the news today and yesterday about a police officer, well, technically two of them, who appear to have been in a heated shootout with an acorn. This story is wild, and we have all the sweet southern tea for you uh, from beginning to end. Now, contrary to popular belief, the incident around which this story revolves took place on November 12th of 2023 in the Fort Walton Beach area of Okaloosa County, Florida. So technically, this sheriff's deputy, one very embarrassed Jesse Hernandez, could be classified as a Florida man. While the incident happened a few months ago, the grand conclusion to the incident and the investigation which followed is brand new. Now, normally YouTube's community guidelines are pretty touchy about gunfire, but since this is body cam footage of an officer and every single news organization has reported this exact footage, I think we're fine. In the confusing body cam footage, Officer Hernandez can be seen firing several rounds, many rounds, uh, into the back of his own police car, declaring himself shot uh, and even falling to the ground as he unloaded his clip. Hernandez seemed to believe he was under attack and had been the victim of a gunshot wound. Uh, he says, I've been hit while he's on the floor. But as a viewer, it's confusing trying to figure out where the supposed gunfire is actually coming from. As it turned out, though, the noise that Hernandez heard was actually an acorn falling from the tree above and hitting the car, which can be heard in the video, but didn't sound one bit like actual gunfire. Now that it's been more thoroughly investigated, we have a much clearer picture of what actually happened here. Apparently, the fateful events of that day went down as follows. Officer Jesse Hernandez and his partner, Sergeant Beth Roberts, who was also involved in the incident and the shooting with the acorn, were investigating two separate service calls that day. The first, made at 8.42 a.m., reported a vehicle driving around honking its horn and disrupting the peace since 3 a.m. The second, a call from a dis distressed local woman, alleged that her 22-year-old boyfriend, Marquise Jackson, had not only stolen her car, but been sending her threatening messages and leaving similarly disturbing voicemails. Car back. I've been asking all night, can I get my car back? Like, I don't care about the argument. I don't care about, I don't even know what the argument is about. I just want my car. Mm -hmm. I don't want to deal with anything. I know anytime we get into it, whether I'm right or wrong, I, he puts his hands on me or he threatens to put his hands on me. It gets very violent. There he is. In your car or walking up? He's walking. Anyway, they found Jackson on McLaren Circle around 9.09 a.m., and uh, they proceeded to detain, search, and handcuff Jackson before placing him in the back of the car. Pat him down, please. What's that? Pat him down. Well, I'm getting patted down for him. Do you have any weapons on you? No. Okay. Well, I'm getting patted down for him. Because you're getting patted down. Why? Do you have any weapons on you? No, I don't have no weapons okay. on me. What's that like that? Don't got no weapons on me. Hands on your pockets. Okay. So, what's, what's your side? No. I ain't got no side. I ain't got... Whatever she said is what it is. It's a, whatever she want to do, let's do it. And see how far she want to take it. Where is her car? At her mom's house. Uh, let's, let's, see how, let's see how far she wants to take it. Officer Roberts then goes back to the uh, victim of this supposed carjacking to try to figure out what happened to her vehicle. What do you want to do? I want my car. Okay, I think it's at your mom's house, is what he's saying. But how did he get here if it's at my mom's um, house? I know. Can you call your mom to see if the car's there? Yeah. Okay. She just called me. Okay, she and see if she's got the keys. Somebody will call back. Somebody call my mom. Yeah, call her real quick. I just want my car. I don't care about anything else. I'm over it. I've been with this for three years. Yeah. 
Police here at Sheikah's house to get my car. It's not at the house? Okay. It's not home. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I said you, my, well, you have my location, right? Detain him, please. Um, I need an affidavit from you. Okay. Where is that? That's where you're filling out that you're wanting to pursue charges. Okay. okay. Moments later, as Deputy Hernandez was walking back towards the car um, to search Jackson again, a light thud is heard to his right, where his patrol car with Jackson handcuffed and sitting in the back is parked. Did you hear it? It was a very soft little tink to his right. I'll play it again. Shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired! Hey, what's that? You know. Hernandez immediately jumps to action, falling to the ground and unloading his full 17-round magazine into the back of his own patrol vehicle where, again, Jackson is handcuffed and sitting, buckled in. From there, Hernandez's partner, Sergeant Roberts, responds as, you know, fairly probably anyone would if they didn't know what was going on here to be fair, and responds as though her partner is accurate in his assessment of the situation, that he's been shot and is engaged with the subject of that attack, who she presumes is Jackson. I'm pulling out your phone. Okay. Do you know your tag number off the top of your head? Okay, no. it's okay. Now, important to note here that one of the craziest parts of this whole debacle is that while so many shots were fired, not a single one actually hit Marquise Jackson, which is certainly lucky for him, maybe one of the luckiest things I've ever heard, but also might mean that Hernandez's aim wasn't much better than his threat assessment skills. So that's obviously ridiculous start to finish, but what actually happened here? How did this officer get it so wrong, thinking that a handcuffed, already searched suspect in the back seat of his car had shot him from said back seat? How did he mistake the dull thud we all heard for the harsh, loud whip crack of a firearm discharge? It's not as though he doesn't know what a firearm sounds like, right? Well, as it turns out, the officer who is now notorious for getting in a dramatic shootout with an oak nut may have had a better reason for his snap decision assessment than it first appeared. And that's not me saying that the whole thing is kosher, but it is more complicated than I believed at first. And this will be a controversial explanation, and many people will doubtlessly say that these reasons are fabricated to keep this officer out of legal trouble, but this is the story as these officers, Hernandez and Roberts, told it. See, according to the police report, when Marquise Jackson's girlfriend was consulting with the police over the car theft and threats, she showed officers a picture of Jackson with what looked to be a pistol silencer, and she had apparently told the officers that he was in possession of one. And recently released body cam footage, the stuff that we've been going over, actually reveals that this appears to be completely true. If he had the firearm, would he leave it in your car? No. 
he would leave it in his own car. He would leave it in his own car. The if there was any weapon, it would be in his car, not in my I hope. Right. My right. When he sent you the picture that we were looking at that we can't figure out what, what it is. I is. I think it's... I, what do you think that is? I don't know. I really don't. Like, I honestly... It's a weird picture. Like it was a threat, thing. and it was... It's the. It's my... my Not dashboard, but... Screen. my screen right you know so it's like why would you send me a picture of that i'll show you again and yeah. tell me what that is i don't know mm -hmm. i don't know what that piece is because that's not ordinarily there right does he have any anything on the firearm like any aftermarket like silencer mm -hmm. that's what that is I'm about to cry Though Hernandez had already searched and handcuffed Jackson, he was apparently returning to the car to do a second search when he heard what he says he believed were silenced handgun shots from inside the car. This is, if true, uh, an explanation for why he would have mistaken this kind of dull thud for shots fired. Apparently a second acorn must have landed on him personally, causing him to believe he had been shot. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the department launched an investigation into the officers in question, and that investigation has just been concluded. During said investigation, Hernandez apparently continued insisting that real shots were in fact fired at him. Though Hernandez had only joined law enforcement in January of 2022, making him a newbie to the police force, he had trained at West Point and served as an intra Entropy Infantry and Special Forces Officer for a decade, which included two rotations in Afghanistan. Though he said he had never faced actual combat because he was an officer, meaning he probably hadn't heard many silenced handgun shots in his life. Later on, investigators showed him frame-by-frame -frame footage of an acorn hitting the car, according to a report by Vice News. Acorn? Hernandez had asked. Acorn, the investigator had responded. I can only imagine how embarrassed he must have been when that realization uh, was made clear to him in such an undeniable way. Ultimately, investigators concluded that Hernandez's use of force was not warranted. His partner, however, was cleared of wrongdoing for her response as she had been responding to what she believed and had perhaps no reasonable reason to doubt, I suppose, was an earnest call for help from a partner under attack. As a result of the embarrassment and the investigation, Jesse Hernandez resigned from the police force in December. However, the investigators also determined that he had not acted with the malice or intent necessary to charge him criminally and that he had been genuine in his mistake. Sheriff Eric Aiden lays this all out quite nicely in his official statement on the incident. He said, Immediately we began working diligently to determine the complete sequence of events and facts surrounding what transpired. Deputy Hernandez resigned during the course of our investigation but was ultimately found to have violated policy. The deputies we cleared, however, of any criminal wrongdoing. We are limited in further response due to pending litigation. But let this be clear. We understand this situation was traumatic for Mr. Jackson and all involved, and have incorporated this officer-involved shooting into our training to try to ensure nothing similar happens again. We are very thankful Mr. Jackson wasn't injured, and we have no reason to think former Deputy Hernandez acted with any malice. Though his actions were ultimately not warranted, we do believe he felt his life was in immediate peril, and his response was based off the totality of circumstances surrounding this fear. Just as we have an obligation to protect our officers so they can come home safely to their families, law enforcement has the same obligation to any citizen being investigated for a crime. In another statement about a week later when asked about the whole Marquise Jackson thing, um, Sheriff Aiden said that the department was limited in further response due to pending litigation. However, when the outlet Motherboard could not find court records related to the incident online and reached out to Okaloosa County Courthouse, 
that confirmed it did not have any recent records related to either party. Motherboard reached out to the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office for clarification, but it's apparently not received a response. So what was the aforementioned pending litigation? Did it even exist? Maybe I'm misunderstanding. Un <laughs> misunderstanding something here, but it does seem odd. And finally, what happened to our other key character here, Marquise Jackson, who had just had probably the closest brush with his own mortality that he has ever, or will ever, have, and somehow came out unscathed, which has likely made him either deeply religious or at least ridiculously optimistic about the concept of being alive. He actually wrote a very comprehensive Facebook post on February 7th, where he describes his version of events and what he's gone through personally because of the incident. And do keep in mind the stuff that this guy's girlfriend was saying to the police that he was doing to her before you read this, but he said, On November 12th, 2023, I, Marquise Jackson, Lord of the Endals and the Seven Kingdoms, was stopped by the Okaloosa County Sheriff's on McLaren Circle in Fort Walton Beach, Florida. While walking, another officer demanded another officer to search me. I was confused on why I was being searched because they never told me anything. I decided to cooperate and just follow demands. I knew I had not done anything wrong. I was searched multiple times, then unlawfully handcuffed and placed in the back seat of the cop car while being strapped down by the seat belts. A few moments later, I heard an officer scream, I'm hit, he's armed. As soon as it was announced, multiple shots were fired at me while I was stuck in the back seat. All I could do was lean over and play dead to prevent getting shot in the head. I was scared to death, and I knew all I could depend on was God. Windows were shattering on me, and the whole time as bullets continued flying across me. I was blessed not to get hit by any bullets or get hurt physically, but mentally, I'm not okay. I haven't been the same since, and I don't think this feeling I have will ever change. I truly believe I'm damaged for life. As shots stopped firing, officers started telling me to put my hands up. Mind you, I'm handcuffed, so I can't. I remember them that they handcuffed me, which led them to begin to tell me to sit up straight. However, when I sat up straight and looked back, I looked straight down the barrel of Officer Batiste's gun and saw several other officers with their guns aimed at me. I left it up to God and just sat there how they wanted me to with my eyes closed. I remember Officer Batiste because he was the officer who wrongly arrested and tasered my little brother a while back. I eventually found a way to rest my, ha my cuffed hands on the shattered window area to show that I wasn't armed. A few minutes later, they swarmed the car and slammed me on the ground to search me and look for any injuries. When I got up, I was led to the ambulance. At that moment, I saw just how many officers were there. But the image I can't get out of my head is seeing how bad my mom was hurt and crying right before I got into the ambulance. While in the ambulance, they cut off all my clothes to continue checking for injuries. I was taken to Fort Walton Beach Medical Center, still handcuffed. They then took me to Okaloosa County Courthouse to book me into the system by taking pictures and fingerprints. I continued to ask every officer I saw what I was being charged with, and they all said the same thing. I don't know, we're waiting on more info. I sat in the cell for hours. Eventually, an officer told me I'm free to go and that I am not charged with anything. They are trying to cover this up by not giving out the body cam footage, which we have since gotten, right? I need for everyone to repost, share, and tag anyone you think could help me during this time. So now that we kind of have everybody's side of the story here, what do you think? Was this punishment appropriate for our overzealous and perhaps jumpy officer? Did his partner do anything wrong and did she get off too easy? Should we have, we, I didn't do anything wrong. Should he have faced criminal charges for this? Do you believe him when he says he honestly thought he was being shot at by a silenced pistol, even though the man was handcuffed, searched, and in the back seat of his car? I look forward as always to hearing your thoughts and feelings in the comments below. This was a very fun one to get into. All right, that's uh, all for today's episode. I'll see you later.